Uh, yeah, good morning. And uh, I'm, uh, as was already said, I'm Tessa and uh, me and Klaas, we're from the Universities of Cologne and Jan is the representative of Münster. Um, and Klaas and myself, we are from the Cologne Center for E-Humanities and Jan is from the Service Center for Digital Humanities. So that's our um, background. Um, before I start, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the Labs for Labs workshop that took place on Monday. Um, yeah, and I see some people, <laughs> at least two people <laughs> who were also there. So um, I hope um, that those who were there will find this a useful continuation of that conversation. And those who were not there, um, well, we hope to bring some of that conversation to you um, now. Okay, and this is how we're going to do it. So we are going to compare our two institutions, our two DH centers at these institutions. Um, we're going to compare them along the three um, topics of service, sustainability, and enabling. And then, based on our experience, we have um, combined those into five themes, let's say, and uh, advantages and disadvantages that we could discuss. Um, at the very end and maybe also quickly uh, after our presentation. So we're also putting some questions to you and then we can discuss all of those. Of course, we are aware that just two institutions in Germany are not representative, first of all, of all possible models of implementation of institutional support, either in Germany or even less globally. So I'm going to do some contextualization first and then we're going to present our experiences. We didn't want to speak too much about what others are doing because we know what we are doing best. And then we, we'd love to hear from you what's happening at your institutions. So for the contextualization, um, I think if we're talking about DH centers, so our institutions are called centers, they're not called labs, but if we're talking about um, the discourse around these topics, then we do have to address the fact that this, in recent years, this has mostly happened under the lab uh, terminology. So if you look at the literature, um, and that's why I want to say a few brief words about that. Um, there used to be, or there still is, CenterNet, so uh, the center terminology used to be a bit more prominent, and um, I can't exactly say how up-to-date this map is, but at the very least a few years ago, and maybe even now, this was kind of the distribution of centers at least registered with, or part of CenterNet, which has a membership fee, uh, I believe. And um, so definitely there's um, a global, it, it's a global phenomenon, obviously, to have a DH center of some type um, at your institution. Uh, if you're looking for literature on this topic, uh, the article by Ursula Pavlika Dega, I hope I didn't butcher that name too much. Um, uh, that article is still, I think, um, the first the first uh, article to read when it comes to that. And so the thing is that uh, she differentiates between different types of lab and one type is the center type lab. And I do find this interesting because there are DH labs that are centers, but I'm not aware of a DH center that's a lab in any sense other than being a center type lab. So basically being a center. So um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the, there's a kind of coexistence of the term center and lab that we haven't quite sussed out in DH. Um, obviously, it's a spectrum. It's a continuum. Maybe we don't have to differentiate um, any further because there are common features to these types of institutional entities, let's say. Um, one thing about the center maybe Mm, not necessarily in a strict difference to other types of labs, but something that does characterize a center or a center type lab, but I'm going to say center, um, is that usually there's some kind of staff, so for consulting or project collaboration, and um, usually it, it is a, some, something of a central institutional, it has something of a central institutional role at the faculty that it's uh, situated at, um, but that's not a... I don't know. I mean, that's something that we can discuss. It's not the most precise uh, differentiation. Uh, and um, in that article, you can find more um, information about all these different features. So um, historically, centers, or also labs that are essentially centers, like the Scholars Lab at, at the University of Virginia, um, they did have an important role about corralling DH 
research at their institutions. And we can also see this when we look at the DH research literature, that there's almost like generations of DH scholars that sort of corral around certain centers. Not everywhere, of course, and not always, um, but that's something um, that um, plays a role in the, in the function of such a center at a university. I do want to say uh, two words or three words about the German situation because we are talking about Germany in our presentation. So a few years ago, 2015, there was a study, or a micro study maybe, um, where three institutions in Germany were interviewed for this article and that was uh, Trier, Göttingen and Cologne. And um, one of the characteristics that they identified at these three institutions was that they are mainly fi financed by third party funding. So that's a feature that you find in Germany a lot. A lot of um, these centers constitute themselves around third party project funding. Um, and there's also the term competence centrum. So competence centers may be like a specific term. It's not, it's not that the centers are necessarily different from what we see internationally, but it, I feel like the term kind of points towards the idea behind it in the German context. Um, still, in recent years, we have seen um, other types of approaches emerging. So now there's also this idea that maybe the university infrastructure ought to provide their researchers or their faculty with permanent support, permanent service. I, I'm putting that in quotes because service, I mean the term is something to discuss. But um, so for example, they will have permanent developer positions, but that's a different kind of model from what we see here. And so these are basically the two types of models that we're going to present, the kind of difference between Cologne and Münster, which it has, both, ha both these approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. And so just uh, to wrap that up, in terms of expectations from the faculty, from the researchers at these institutions, there is usually the service expectation, there is an expectation of sustainability, so the idea that they will bring their data, their projects, their resources to us and we will host them for eternity. Um, and of course there's also this idea of teaching, of knowledge transfer, of disseminating DH, into the faculty in some ways. And um, of course, this will also differ depending on whether there's a DH department and so on. Right. And I think that's it for the framing and I will hand over to my colleagues. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jan, as already stated, and uh, I'm happy to represent the Service Center for Digital Humanities in Münster today. Um, the SCDH was founded in 2018, so we are, um, compared to Cologne, quite young still. Um, we have one head, which is me, uh, one development coordinator, and at the moment 5.5 um, research software developers. We are located at the university library, so we are not an, a research institution in ourselves, but we are committed to the institutional support at the library. and. Um, we, our, our service is there for six faculties and thus we are part of the infrastructure facility. Yes, so I take over for Cologne and um, as Jan already said, we're a bit older and uh, actually a bit bigger, so to say. So that's why we have like three coordinators, which is Tessa is one and the other and Jonathan who's not here is the third one. And the main difference between Münster and Cologne maybe is the scope of our work because we're not just, um, we're located at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, but we're not just working like in a local scope, but uh, we also have a cooperation with the Academy of Sciences in Northern Westphalia, which is one of the eight um, national, not national, the eight academies of sciences in Germany. And we um, pretty much um, uh, engage in, in national and transnational networks as well which means uh, we just have a different focus, so to say. So when we say we work um, as a um, service facility, so to say, we're not providing service just locally, but on a greater scope. And uh, the other important difference is that we are not uh, part of an existing infrastructure institution, but we're part of something that we call the DH ecosystem in Cologne, which consists not just of the CCH, but we also have the data center for the humanities, and the Department for Digital Humanities, which means we already have structures in place which are um, going way beyond the CCH itself. So, 
Am I in issues? Or is it me? Okay. So when we talk about the three levels or the three dimensions of expectations towards those um, centers, the first expectation is that we should provide service in terms of um, technical support and consultancy. And um, in terms of that, we would call what we do a research-driven approach, which means uh, we're not giving technical support in general or let's say consultancy in general, but it's always uh, focused on the specific research projects that are brought to us, so to say. And we have to differentiate um, our mandate in terms of uh, the context that we work in, which means um, when it's going to the faculty side, like the local scope, then it's more consulting and we um, offer to be partner in a project. And only in terms of uh, when, when we work with the academy, then we have the mandate to give technical support to ongoing long-term projects as well. So. What we do in Münster, uh, we like to call it an embedded approach. So we try to um, provide people working in digital humanities or in humanities overall. Um, we try to provide them with uh, generic um, services, generic solutions to their research problems. So um, projects come to us. We are in a way also um, research driven because um, the questions, the demands come from specific projects. but. Um, as a, as a service center, which is part of a library, we are always looking for um, more abstract solutions to specific problems. Um, so our, our main goal is to um, reach all the humanities um, with their traditional or more or less traditional research questions and provide, um, so to say, um, uh, digital solutions to these problems. Um, digital humanities in the broad of the humanities and not as a specific um, research institution in itself, for example. Um, the next expectation we wanted to point out is um, the sustainability. So um, assurance of sustainability, of course, is a big expectation. Um, we are always confronted with um, in specific projects as well as in um, general solutions. Um, the requirement is a long-term maintenance and preservation of resources. Um, the strategy should be um, to offer a stable environment for long-term preservation of digital research results um, with regards to scientific staff as well as institutional structures. In Münster, um, we managed to try uh, to hiring a permanent staff, inclusive, including um, research software engineers, by pooling project resources. So we have um, the main advantage to offer permanent positions and then to have a team of research um, software engineers um, to really work together with specific projects. Um, in this way, of course, projects become possible that were not thinkable before. Imagine you have a project where you have the need for a research software engineer for like say uh, half a position for one year um, it wouldn't be possible to find a person to do this job, um, but we can do that as a team, as a service center. So um, the sustainable options for generic software development, of course, is the main goal for us. Um, we come, try to come up with generic solutions for DH services that um, manage to bridge the gap between specific <coughs> projects. The distribution of different software development tasks as I just said, um, is required during the course of a project among several people in the SCDH. So usually you, need, you would need someone else in the beginning of a project than you need in the middle or in the end. And we can manage to distribute the specific uh, and different tasks among several people in our team. And this way we kind of manage, I hope, um, to produce synergies in a systematic way. Okay, we have to hurry up a bit, Jan. Um, <laughs> okay, so the main difference, so this is gonna be fast. Uh, the main difference is uh, that we cannot offer permanent positions, which is a peculiarity of the German system, maybe. So what we have is uh, fixed-term contracts, and a lot of them. So the good thing is we have long-term projects, quite a number of, so that we can kind of virtually offer long-term positions as well, but um, the main difference is we have no Permanent position means we cannot do something like generic software development. 
development or so, so not long-term planning in that sense, but we always have to stick to the projects themselves. So the only thing we can do is we uh, try to build clusters. So I don't know, a couple of projects are uh, concerned with language resources or digital editions or historical um, topics, for example, and then we try to share technical solutions across those projects. But when we talk about sustainability, we mainly talk about uh, the resources and um, their long-term provision. And as I said, we have no permanent positions, but we still have the mandate and uh, we really want to um, do this long-term provision. And uh, when we say long-term, then we mean not only the data, but also the software, because we think it's an important part of research results, uh, the way they are displayed, for example. And for that, you need a lot of people who take care of it. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so what we do here is, again, interlinking the local institutions. As I said, like in Cologne, we're not just one institution, but there's several of them. So we have the data center, the DH department, computing center, and so on. And we always try to organize this as a process, so to say. So whenever we do not have the capabilities, we go to colleagues like Jan in Münster and say, how can we share this, for example? Or we um, kind of build some hope on the NFDI, which is the German Research Data Management Infrastructure, which is a new initiative building up right now, and we hope it will help. So, so our close connection to the library in Münster guarantees the direct transfer um, to other services like research data management, which also has a service center, and long-term archiving in the library. Um, but what we, do, what we cannot provide is individual project websites. This is always an expectation uh, people have, but we cannot do that, of course. Uh, I think no library can, really can. Instead, we focus on formats and standards, um, what we call the um, data first principle. What we mean by that is um, the data is published via download with persistent identifier for long-term availability. Then the data is made available via an RP, for example, as part of a generic service, if available. And um, on the last step, the data is presented visually via a web front end, um, if offered as a part of a generic service solution. OK, so expectation three. I have to hurry again. Um, it's about how do we enable and empower research or researchers in that uh, very sense. And the main difference here, so I just take over your part, okay? So the main difference here is um, that in Münster, there's no dedicated DH department. I already mentioned in Cologne there is, so we can rely on existing structures, and Münster has to build up it on their own. So they do a lot of training by themselves, like organize the interest locally, and we, as I said, like um, go more into existing structures there. So. We are running out of time already, so I have to be quick. Um, the first question we want to propose is uh, infrastructure as necessity. How can long-term infrastructure serve the dynamically changing needs of humanities research, which we would like to discuss with you as well? Um, an institutional backbone for consultancy, the fair implementation, technical support are important points here. Um, we try to systematically ensure synergies between projects. In Münster, we try to develop generic services. We set on a cloud-based and modular DH infrastructure. Um, we foster synergetic, um, team, synergistic teamwork. In Cologne, um, um, people try to cluster methodological expertise, for example, text-bearing objects or historical languages or digital editions. But um, the flexibility is limited. New requirements may not fit into the portfolio, and um, proliferation of isolated solutions puts a strain on the structure, of course. Okay, so we put this only as a question. So how do we organize this as a process? So it's not the question of just, um, there must be an infrastructure organization taking care of things, but there must be people. So one of the biggest mandates that we have is to organize this as a social process. So this is something we can talk about that uh, later. And um, this is quite obvious. So the question of knowledge transfer, I think um, we all agree that this is kind of one of the most important things that we do, that we share knowledge within those projects and beyond. And the research as a service. Okay, well, 
I think I have 10 seconds, so I don't know what I'm going to say here, but uh, yeah, I think one thing is that just in general, the idea that, I mean, how do people approach us, the researchers? Do they expect us to, like they bring their project proposals and they want us to add a digital component and that's it? Or do they actually engage with the age and with what that means methodologically for their projects? So that's something that we always try to... Um, I mean, the thing is, for example, if they want to do an edition, it's kind of clear that they have to do it as a digital edition, otherwise they're not going to get funding. So they're going to do it digitally, but they don't know why they actually, why they're actually doing this project digitally. So it's for us to provide them with the answer, but also to make them think about that for themselves and to communicate to them that, um, for example, in a project proposal, um, it has to, all the parts have to um, connect. It, it's not just, you can't just add a digital humanities component to that, but it might, um, it might mean that they, uh, yeah, don't, get, and don't engage with the age as deeply as the, could, they could themselves. And I'm just going to leave that up there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of collaboration needed on the university level, on the lo local, regional, national, and uh, obviously we can't fit all of that into 20 minutes, so I'm just going to end it here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>